The Snow Queen, a new audio drama by Deirdre Dwyer, presented by Broken Crow in association with Garter Lane Arts Centre and The Everyman. Episode 1, The Story Which Tells of a Broken Mirror. Once upon a time, in a little town, there were two children who were best friends. Every day of their lives, they played together. Come on, Grania, you can do it. Reach up. Just a little higher. Stand on that branch there. Yes. I'm up. If I just pull up my leg. Whoa, Quivine. It's amazing up here. There. I can see all the way to the river. And if you look that way to the north, can you see it? Really far in the distance? It's Ord Mountain. I can. I know. That's why I wanted us to climb up this old oak. It looks brilliant. Kind of shimmery. Whoa, what's that? Quivine, are you okay? Ouch, my eye. Quivine. My heart off. Ah! Quivine, Quivine, I'm coming, I'm coming. And that is how our two friends found themselves tangled up in the story of the Snow Queen. Not too long ago, in a place not too far from here lived a woman. She was very clever, very beautiful, and very cold. She called herself the Snow Queen. Her castle was perched on the top of the tallest mountain, which was always covered in snow and protected by clouds. This woman lived alone except for her servant, a sprite. How ya? I'm Larry. I work for Queenie. I mean, the mistress. I do the regular frozen castle stuff here. You know yourself. Dusting, cleaning, feeding the ice chickens. The usual. The castle was full of cold, white and blue treasures. A crystal vase that turned flowers into ice. A gallery of dancing snow figures and, in the ballroom, a huge magic mirror. This mirror's power was to show opposites. When she looked in the mirror, she saw a rosy-cheeked grandmother knitting by the fire. She kept it under a curtain so she didn't have to look at that. When I look at myself in the mirror, I see a tall, handsome young fella. I can't get enough. The mirror had the power to make your cosy house look like an unwelcoming shed and your closest friend seem like an enemy. That was until one day when it was broken. In through the open window flew the ice chickens. They like to have a look at themselves in the mirror. You see, it makes them look like regal eagles. Well, I was whooshing them out of the way when, whoops, the broom handle slipped out of my hand and boom, smashed the mirror into bits. Then a great gust of wind burst through the open window and whoosh, it blew all the shattered bits of broken mirror out into the clouds. Larry, what have you done? It was an accident. I didn't mean to. I was trying to get the boat. Didn't mean to? Didn't mean to? That's not good enough, you fool. And so now I suppose I'm going to have to be the one to undo this mess. Well, we need to find each and every one of the shards of broken glass in order to rebuild my magnificent mirror. Do you understand me, Larry? Yes, my lady. Get the carriage ready. We've got a lot of searching to do. You know that feeling you get at the beginning of winter, after the last sunny day of autumn, when the trees are bare, And you don't know if the sun will ever come out and warm you again? That is a sliver of mirror slipping past you. You know the feeling you get when you see your best friend whispering with someone else and you think, maybe they're whispering about you? That is a splinter drifting past your eyes. And if a shard gets into your eyes, it can make you look at something beautiful. 
and see nothing good in it at all. You lose all hope. There is a plus side, though. You can look at dog poo and see a slice of chocolate cake. Though, let me warn you, that also has its dangers. Well, that's all the Snow Queen's fault. Yes, indeed, no one else to blame. Queeveen, Grania, come in. The crumble is just out of the oven. Coming, Mamo. Don't call her that. She's not your granny. What? You never used to mind. And you don't mind, do you, Mamo? Of course I don't, as Queeveen well knows. Well, I don't like it anymore. We're not actually family. Queeveen, we've been best friends since I was born. I've spent more time at your house with you and Mamo than I have next door with my own dad. Well, I don't like it anymore. She's my gran, not yours. I'm going upstairs to get another jumper. I'm freezing. Has he been like that all day? He's been out of sorts since the fall from that tree last week. What possessed you to climb up so high, Gráinne? We wanted to see Ard Mountain. Mamo, something happened before he fell. You know, Queeveen, he never falls. It was like something got in his eye and then he let go and grabbed his heart. That's what made him fall. What are you two fools wittering about? Queeveen McNamara, I beg your pardon. What did you say? Hello, and how are all here? Oh, have I... Hello, Michal. You're just in time for some crumble. S- sit down there. Thanks. Hi, Dad. Did you have a good day, Grania? We picked the last of the blackberries from the brambles at the bottom of the garden. Mamo made crumble. Blackberries are actually Rubus fruticosus in Latin. Don't you know anything, Grania? Rubus is a genus of flowering plants in the rose family. Right. Well, that's good to know, I suppose. And how are you this evening, Queeveen? Fine. Oh, th- this crumble is delicious. How are you feeling after your fall? A- any better? Fine. Right, and... Everything's fine. What is this? Twenty questions? Queeveen! Right, so, that was a mighty crumble. The last of the berries for the year... What was it, Queeveen? Rubius? Well, we'll be off so. There was a chill in the air on the walk home. I think there'll be snow tonight. Thanks for minding Grania. Bye, Mamo. Slán, Queeveen. See you soon. What is up with him? I don't know. Before he fell out of the tree, I thought he had been stung by something. He screeched and grabbed at his eye and then his chest. And then he just fell. I was crying when I got down to him, lying there so still. And then he just blinked open his eyes, looked at me really coldly, and said to stop my stupid crying. He's been horrible ever since. Oh, I'm sorry, love. But sure, don't mind him. He's bound to cheer up soon. Dad, He thinks he knows everything, like that earlier with the blackberries. He'll only play with the older kids. Can I just come straight home after school tomorrow? If that's what you want. Oh, Grania, look, the first snowflakes. Aren't they beautiful? They're perfect. Get in quick. I think it's going to be a heavy one. And Michal was right. It snowed thick and fast that night, the first snow of the winter. Quiveen, who'd been sent to bed with no crumble for being rude, normally loved the first snow. When the first flakes fell, he would shine his torch at Grania's window and they would wave across to each other and watch the snow pile up. This time, when he looked out of the window, Quiveen could see nothing but white, wet, Dust falling from the sky. Ugh, pollution. Disgusting. He swished closed his curtains, rolled over, shivered, and went straight to sleep. Grania spent a long time looking out of her window, hoping to see the glimmer of a torch. But there wasn't any light from Queeveen's room. 
just the cold white snow shining in the moonlight. You have been listening to the voices of Mia Clifford, Fionn Butler, Nicholas Kavanagh, Jackie Kelleher and Aideen Wilde. For further information about the cast and crew, go to DeirdreDwyer.com. This project was made in the winter of 2020 and was only possible thanks to the support of the Arts Council, Waterford City and County Arts Office, Waterford Cultural Quarter and Winterville.